let's talk about block states and create a custom lamp block. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, Ray Fans back in Taylor once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about block states. This is a just a bit more of a theoretical approach to a tutorial. However, we will add a custom block over here. And I will say this the concept that you will learn over here is actually quite important. So the idea is the difference between a block and a block state. When we look at our mod blocks class, right? And we, for example, have the magic block right here. How many magic blocks can I set down inside of the world that are like individual magic blocks? Well, however many I want, right? However, if we look at this, we only ever have one magic block registry object right here, right? And we only ever are creating one magic block instance, right? So from the magic block class. So how does that then work? That is because every block inside of the world, the instances there are called block states. So the registry object block over here, that's sort of a singleton. And then a block state is the instance that is created from that particular block. But we're going to see this in an example. So in our block custom package, we're going to right click new java class called the alexandrite lamp block over here and this will extends the from the block class and we're going to hover over this create constructor managing super once again if the properties here annoy you click on it press shift f6 and then we can rename this now if i were to say to you i want to make this lamp and i want to be able to right click this and i have a you know i want to basically turn it on and off and obviously if i say i want to turn something on and off then that would be a boolean right so you can say well just let's just make a boolean over here while this clicked and then we can just manipulate this boolean. You would be correct. However, the issue here is that this boolean is specific for each instance of this class that gets created. But remember, how many class instances are we creating? Like how many objects from this class are we creating? One. There's only ever one object of this particular class. Therefore, this does not work. Same thing if we were to go static, right? A static boolean also doesn't work because now it's shared through all of the instances of this class. So what we need is we need a different thing and that is a block state property. So block state properties are basically variables that you can add to blocks and those are then also basically inherited by the block states. Highly recommended to let's say for example, I can click on block, press control H and we can for example, take a look at Mm, a power block could work, right? So that actually has a power block does not have it because, ah, yes. We could take a look at, do, 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 let's see, which one is pretty good? The composter might have some stuff. It has a, a integer property level, like how full the composter block is, right? So that was one of them. The door block, right? Whether or not it is powered, which hinge location it has, like, like is it right hinged or left hinged? Is it what, which half it is? Is it the bottom half of a block or the top half of the block? Of the block which direction it is facing so there's a couple of different like properties that exist over here highly recommended to check a couple of them out but here we're going to need a simple boolean property so public static final boolean property i'm going to call this clicked in this case equal to boolean property dot create and the name here is clicked as well and every time you add a boolean property to a block you always have to call or you know overwrite the create block state definition method where we call pbuilder.add and then adding that particular boolean property. This is extremely important. If you want to set the default value, you can do so in the constructor by saying this dot register default state, passing in this dot default block state dot set value of clicked, and we're going to set the base value, like the default state, to false, meaning that the actual lamp is going to be off every time we put it down. And now how are we going to change this? Well, we right click this block by doing the use without item method here we're going to return the interaction result of success this is going to give us an animation so the right like the right clicking animation that the actual hand is going to swing and i'm going to say if p level dot is client side and here once again pay very close attention because is client side needs to be negated we want it to be on the server for this so it's if and then exclamation mark p level is client side very very important that you do not miss this that is going to be like a diff, like a huge difference. And then inside of here, we want to get the current state. So we're going to say boolean current state equal to pState.get. And then we're going to get the value of the click property of the state that we've just right clicked, right? Because obviously, once again, right, the block state inside of the world, that is the thing that has a position, right? That's an actual instance of the, of the block. And we right click that particular state. And then we ask, okay, what is the current state of this? And then we're going to say p level.set block. 
and update, actually quite important, set block and update. I'm going to do this at the position that we've just right clicked. And we're going to say we're going to get the state that we already have and we're going to set the value to it to the from the clicked. We're going to set the value of the click property to the current state negated. Basically meaning that if it's false, right, we're going to turn it to true. If it is true, then we're turning it to false. So basically just like a normal, like flipping behavior, right, like a normal switch in this case, that is basically it. And that's actually the entire class that I wanted to add. Of course, there's one or two more things that are quite interesting, and that's going to be in the registration. Because when we register our custom block over here, it's going to be a public static final registry object of type block. That's all fair and well. However, this is the Alexandrite underscore lamp equal to the register block method with by passing in obviously alexandrite underscore block and then the second parameter a a sub supplier of a new alexandrite block where we pass in the properties block behavior properties that of let's say a strength of three and then we go the light level over here ah and the light level actually is going to make this block shine now you can see this is in two int function of type block state sounds very complicated the idea is that it takes in a block state over here and expects out a an integer you can like basically give it integers between 0 and 15 15 being the max light level 0 being the like i mean basically no light level and what we want to do is we want to say well if the state so if the value of the click property so if so if state get value alexandrite lamp block that clicked if that is true then we're going to return a 15 so max light value and if not then a zero so we're just using the ternary operator over here to basically solidify this uh, you know basically in one line and there you go that's the idea and this is also how you can add a well block that sheds light right so that's pretty cool let's uh, quickly or let's let's add the translation and the textures over here obviously they're very straightforward right and the same thing goes for the texture there's actually two there's an on and an off texture we're just gonna copy this over there we go and with that done, we can go on to the data gen. Now, on, when it comes to the data gen, we're going to start with the block. Uh, the, we're going to start with the loot provider, which is, I mean, I'm going to be real. That's going to be very straightforward because this just drops itself. Very straightforward. However, the block states. Well, this is one of those things where we have argued about it before, but you can think about whether or not this makes sense to make a data gen or if you just make it manually. Because I have this, which is a custom lamp method, literally like hard coded the lamp over here, hard coded the, the names, and then we're calling this right here. Uh, this is, of course, available to you down below. Now, you can also argue, honestly, th this, this is fairly simple. We could probably literally just make this ourselves, uh, like manually, especially if you only have ever one lamp, right? If you have one lamp block, then making all of this craziness, probably not needed. However, if you have like 16, let's say you add a lamp for each of the different colors, you know, then I think this makes sense. And then obviously you would even make this generalize right you would take the block out of here and actually add this as a parameter right you'd make sure that the you don't have to pass in each individual name over here you just take the name from the from the lamp like from the block itself and then add like the underscore on and underscore of as like suffixes things like that oh yeah that is basically all we need so let's first of all run the data gen and you're going to see the block states json file that it generates and then might you might also say wait a second this is called block states yes that is what is defined, right? So when we when a, a block is set down inside of the world, that's the idea, right? So we're checking for the block states over here, and you'll see that the way that it works is basically a similar type of thing that we've seen in some of the like door and, and fence door stuff. Oh, for some reason, I wrote Alexandrite block over here instead of Alexandrite lamp. I, I don't even know what happened there. Well, there you go. But yeah, that's totally fine. Let's run the data again. There you go. That's fine. That's just a typo. And then once that is done, we can see now it all generates. There you go. And we can see the JSON file over here. So the clicked, right? You can see if it's false, it points to the Alexandrite lamp off model, like a JSON file right here, which just points to a different texture. That's literally all that there is to it. So does it make sense to make this manually if you only have one of them? It probably would be fine. But there you go. We have this done, and as always, all the code is available down below. So let's now jump into the game and see if it works. And of course, what did we forget to add it to the creative mode tab? This is, you know, it sometimes happens, but there you go. Now let's take a look at the lamp. All right, I found it back in Minecraft, and you can see the Alexandrite lamp has been added. And if I right click it, you can see they basically turn on and off individually, right? So they're all each individual block states, and that's the whole idea, right? Once again, even though they're all Alexandrite lamps, right? They're all like individual blocks. 
they are different block states and therefore they're different instances of the same block. So they share the same functionality. However, they don't share, in this case, the same block state property values, right? They all have the same properties, but they don't share the same value. That's the whole idea. And that is not only a lamp block that, well, sheds some light, but also block states and blocks explained. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, that's when we'll tackle the new data components. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.